a historic drought in the Horn of Africa and complications from COVID have created a global food crisis. The UN broker deal is not. Okay, so let me call the meeting to order at this point. Um, I haven't heard from Lily, um, so I don't know if we have any minutes of the previous meeting. Um, let me introduce two people. John Real, you're representing which committee, John? Natural Resource Advisory Board. Natural Resources, and Barbara Carboni is that is the select board representative to our committee. Um, nice. So why, John, is there some particular topic that you'd like to um, bring up? Well, I thought if uh, you give me a couple of minutes, I'd just talk about a project that NRAB is working on uh, okay. and that's actually on the town warrant. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the Flora and Fauna Project. Okay, one of it's our on the warrant, but it's also subject uh, requires free cash to fund it, and the odds are not looking good. But the basic principle is that it's been 50 years since we had a broad survey of um, the harbor and and the life within the harbor. Um, and we are we think that it's way overdue um, to have another one. There's been a lot of climate change. Uh, there's been a lot of development of um, shell fishing in those 50 years. And if we look to the immediate future, there's some big changes coming. The uh, restoration of the Herring River uh, for is, is one example. Um, the wastewater project is another example. So we think it's important to get a baseline so we can look at the effect of those changes on, uh, on the harbor. One of the things that I think is unique about what we propose is that we are looking not only at the basic um, animals and creatures that live within the harbor, oysters, um, bluefish, uh, herring, uh, menhaden, uh, but also on what they eat. Um, oysters eat a lot of phytoplankton. Um, big fish eat little fish and little fish eat mosquitoes. So we, we get a, a, a different perspective on, on life in, in the harbor and how it's, uh, how it's uh, going to react to future change. Um, so we're, we're uh, hopeful that uh, it allows a, uh, uh, the free cash allows us to get started um, this uh, fall, but if not, we'll be back in the spring and uh, we'll, we'll try again. Um, uh, but if there are any questions about what we're planning to do, um, uh, I'd be glad to listen to the discussion. Which article is it? Five. Article five. Okay, because one of our agenda items is whether or not we wish to take any position on any of the articles. So when we, we get to that. We do have support from the Conservation Commission. We do have... Um, Support from the Shellfish Board and the Shellfish uh, Office, um, but obviously any any further support or criticism uh, would only strengthen the process. Okay, and it will cost. Well, we're we're putting in for uh, seventy five thousand. That's based. Uh, that cost is based on some work which was done about five or 10 years ago in Pleasant Bay. And it takes into account not only inflation, but some of our specific testing. Mm -hmm. And are you looking around for any grants to offset that? Yes, I began, I began to talk with um, SPAT. Several people have asked that question and um, mm -hmm. how about state looking money? to that possibility. Excuse me? How, how about state money? 
state, state funding. No, I think we uh, at the moment we're only looking at uh, lo local funding. Um, if you have some other suggestions, let us know because I do have a suggestion. Send an email to Suzanne Ryan asking her if she knows of any potential funding <laughs> sources because she's been doing a lot of the grants. Carol has too. Have you uh, seen anything that might cover this in your perusing of grants? Not off the top of my head, no. Okay, and um, what is it, Heather Macken, McEnroy? McElroy. McElroy at the Cape Cod Commission might know funding sources that might be relevant. Um, she's their environmental lead. And, um, What's the name again? Uh, Heather McElroy. It, it's just worth a, it's worth yeah. the inquiry, right? She's worth yeah. talking to. Um, uh, the Cape Cod Commission itself may or may not have any money but they certainly are aware of all the grant, more grant programs than we are. Because this is a little bit out of our ballpark for um, this. So we have, but she might know. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else you, you wanted to bring up? No, oh, that was it. Thank you very much for listening. Okay. You're certainly welcome to stay. Um, Dick, do we do we want to entertain uh, a motion for we can to support this effort? If you'd like to do this one now, yes, we we will go over the rest of the warrant later to see if there's anything we think is relevant. But I'm willing to entertain a motion. Would you like to make one? I move that the um, Well Fleet Energy and Climate Action Committee express its support for this project uh, to the um, Natural Resources Committee. Okay, well, it's a, I would think it's a recommendation in favor of the article is the motion. All right, I move that the uh, Wolfley Climate, uh, Energy and Climate Action Committee uh, express its support for uh, this warrant article. Okay, is there a second? Second. Carol, okay. All in favor, um, GB? Are you, yes, David? You're muted, David. You're still muted. Still muted. Raise no, your no. hand. The answer is yes. Okay, Carol? Aye. And Dick, I'll vote aye. So that's four zero in favor. Okay, we will go on to the other articles later to see if there are any that are relevant. Well, thank you for your support and suggestions. You'll excuse me if I cut out now because I have to get up bright and early in the morning. Sure. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Hi, John. Good to see you. Um, we'll have to talk sometime, see how you're surviving in your new job. Okay. I like that very much. Good. Okay. Okay, our next article, article on the agenda is the new legislation, state and federal. Now, I don't claim to understand all of it at this point, but there are two separate bills. Um, the state bill, which passed first, seems to be mostly addressed towards getting wind energy offshore wind going right i think it's a, a lot to do with speeding up permitting that sort of thing right and um that's really outside of what we might do but of course it's great news it also codified in law the um goals that we have set at which the administration said informally, but now the legislature has said, and that is a 25% reduction by 2020, 50% by 20, um, 
30, 75 percent by 2040, and 100 percent or net zero by 2050. And this is below 2009 levels, which are, is worth keeping track of because the peak electrical use was somewhere around 2009 or 2014, somewhere in that range. So being set below 2009 levels is more ambitious than going below 2009, 2012 levels. It's below 1990 levels, I'm sorry, instead of 2009 and 2012. So although they all only quote the percentages, percentages of what is important, but the state's goals are more ambitious than the federal goals, which are only 40% by 2030. So um, the only other thing that I caught that was relevant was that um, the legislature told the Department of Public Utilities to work on time of use metering. And time of use metering is significant if you want to charge OVs over EVs overnight, all right? Because you can buy electricity at a lot lower cost if you're only buying it between midnight and 6 a.m. And by mean buying it, I mean at the Cape like compact level. So actually the Cape Light Comp, I'm talking with the staff of the compact on September 6th to see if we can set up a new rate for time of use metering where electricity would only be available between say midnight and 6 a.m. Now, but it would presumably be something like half price at least at the wholesale level would be half price. Um, I don't know. And we'll also probably at the Cape Light Compact level, ask the DPU to eliminate the demand charges for someone on that rate, because obviously there's no peak demand charge when you're talking about midnight to 6 a.m. when usage is very low. I guess, I'm seeing a lot of vacant eyes. <laughs> anyway, um, this is mostly relevant for multifamily homes, which we don't have here, but I am working with a group in Brewster to put an EV charging in a multifamily unit and, try, and trying to get them this kind of a rate. So that's the other thing that's relevant about um, the state law. The federal law, um, actually duplicates an awful lot of what Mass Save is doing. Um, let me see if I can find that. You're talking about the Inflation Reduction Act or whatever yes, they call it. The Inflation Reduction Act, right. A pandering name if I ever saw one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, but I say, who cares? <laughs> right. And this is what I was able to put together from that act. Um, that they will have rebates up to $1,750 for a hot water heater, $8,000 for a space heat pump, $840 for those... Um, induction cooktops or air electric heat pump clothes dryers, $4,000 for breaker boxes, $1,600 for insulation, <clears throat> and $2,500 for electric wiring. Now this is income, 80% of area median income, and probably half of that much for 120%. So it is um, income specific but it has a lot of overlap with what the Cape Light Compact currently offers. So the Cape Light Compact is going to be scrambling now to figure out what their new offerings will be. Hopefully oh. they'll take all the money and extend what they're doing since they can now rely on federal money for the core of it. Well, one of the things, Dick, that I hope they can continue 
which is in some ways better than that federal list is the um, the issue of changing out your carbon-based heat source, your oil burner or propane. So well, that's what the heating. That's what the air source heat pumps were. Right, but the doll, but the dollar amount is up to ten thousand dollars right now through Cape Light Compact, as I understand it. Well, so, I don't know how these two will combine. I don't know either. Um, <clears throat> I mean, nobody does know. I, 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 I can I can just add one thing to that. I just had uh, Rise Engineering, which is the um, company that um, Kate Light Compact uses to make an assessment. Uh, they are out to uh, my house and uh, look things over, and then you know sent me a, an email talking about you know you can work with these contractors to do what you want to do. And here's some of the things you might get and so forth. And then the, the bill, the, I guess we call it the IRA <laughs> passed. So I, I, I said, now I got to wait and find out what all of the details are on Except that. that <laughs> and if your income and, is less than 120% of area median, median income, well, they have they 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 have they have you know income levels for um, various things, right? So, but, and and that you know they're not not all the, the same. The top tier for Cape Light Compact, which I think is seventy five percent reimbursement on things, or some number does not depend on income, right? So right. Cape Light Compact has some offering that's not income based. I think I think the seventy five percent is on insulation, additional insulation. Right. It's, the the, uh, the it's, inducement to get you to get rid of your oil burner, as in my example, is not income based, as I understand it. It's yes, it's you're right. It's a flat fee. And right. It's right. Like on the order of ten thousand dollars. That's right. correct. Yeah. Right. But there but there are additional incentives on that for um, lower income situations. Yeah, right. to one hundred percent. Well, I'm just I'm just waiting for everything to get out there, and you know somebody in Cape Light Compact. I hope you know to come out and say, okay, here's here's you know everything combined, what whatever we had before, and whatever's in the bill, and whatever the state is adding, and so forth. Here's what you can do now. Okay, and the compact will not even begin to discuss it till mid September because we don't have a meeting in August. So, and- Well, and it's a tricky business. It it's, it's a matter of them, their compact figuring out what they want to do, but also what they're allowed to do as it relates to the federal legislation. And I'm sure they're busy and, trying to figure that out now, Dick, to, to some extent. And it affects their off the Cape Light Compact, which is part of Mass Save. And Mass Save has a statewide council, and that council has to agree on right. everything. Yeah. So yeah. it'll probably be four to six months before we get their act together on incentives. Change and that will be time for some of the federal legislation to, to become a little clearer, hopefully, or begin to shake right. out a little bit. Right. So um one, one other thing that I, I think is going to be important to advertise is if you do something at, at some period, you know, will you be retroactively able to take advantage of what's going on? For instance, if everything isn't settled by, you know, the middle of next year, I, I'd like to get a contractor lined up in the spring before they get busy and everything to get to work on this whole thing. But I, I like to hope that I can take advantage of, uh, you know, whatever final. Um, so I don't know what incentives. the median income is. Um, you'd have to look it up, but you probably are not going to be eligible for, for the federal. So the federal bill may not affect you. But the federal bill is the only other thing I know about the federal thing is it's taken off at the point of sale. It's not a credit where you have to apply for taxes. So when you go to the store, 
they take it off when you buy the stuff. And I don't know what, what how that works with something as big as a, a furnace, you know, an air source furnace. Anyway. A couple of questions related sure. to that Globe article. One yeah. is that they talked about, I think it was Mass Say, of working on a couple of um, sort of new efforts. And one of them was called Networked Geothermal. What is that? Okay, um, so think of a city. If you dig a deep hole and run water down it, the water comes back at 57 degrees, which means if you want to heat your home, you use a heat pump to bring it up to 90 degrees. Or if you want to cool your home, you just run it through the fans. But if you're in a multifamily home, you can run all the apartments from the same heat, from the same um, geothermal pump. Okay, so in cities, because this is a statewide plan, in cities you can dig one large geothermal well and then circulate the water. So it's a, a network for multiple housing yes. I think uh, I, I think just to add to that I think uh, something I read about that indicated that if you want to put ge geothermal um, you know ground source um, heating heat pumping in into your home it's it's relatively an expensive proposition if you can convince everybody in your neighborhood to share a system then it becomes much more cost effective and it's not necessarily drilling just one hole. They can drill holes up and down the street so that they, you know, have uh, greater access to the uh, uh, to the geothermal areas beneath the surface. But right. but it becomes a shared proposition. And the thing about drilling holes where we live is that you're not drilling; you're just moving the sand out of the way. <laughs> go down 25 feet to 50 feet, and you're now in salt water infused sand, which is a terrific thermal conductor. So ground source heat pumps are ideal for Cape Cod because you don't have to go down very far. The highest point in Wellfleet, I think, is only 100 feet above sea level, maybe 50 feet above sea level. So you only have to drill 50 feet through wet sand unless you happen to hit a boulder, you know, bad luck, but, uh, you know, you're not going through rock all the way, you're not going through clay, you're going through wet sand, and it's a very good conductor, one of the best. So um, somebody's got to come to the realization that it's cheap to drill wells and start offering it for, right now they want $40,000 to put in the system to tear up your yard and do it. But you don't have to tear up your yard. You can tear up a 10 by 10 square foot area. And that's all it takes to drill one of these wells, provided you use directional drilling where the pipe bends. So you go down and then you come up and you go down and come up. And those that technology was perfected with um, oil drilling in Texas. And so far, there's only one company that's doing it, and they picked Long Island as the place they wanted to start, not um, Cape Cod. That's dandelion energy. So my other question is, um, it talked about a lot of this bill not having funding attached to it, and yes. that it was dependent on the passage of an economic development bill. Do you, what is the status of that? Well, remember, most of the big money is going for offshore wind, right? I don't know what the state bill isn't the rebates. That's the federal bill. So I'm not sure um, what, I don't know what that's about, actually, what money, what needs to be funded. I've read the bill, but it's very hard to understand because the bill says change line three of section seven to be something. You have to have the original bill and see what it was changed to. And, you know, it looked like hours of work. I was relying on a lawyer to do it for me. 
Thank you. Mainly from the Cape Lake contact. It's, it's hard to understand. Okay. Does anyone else have anything um, wanted to talk about these new bills? Okay. Our next item was working with town administration. Um, originally, that was how are we doing with Hillary and with grants and so on. Do you have anything in the works, Carol? Um, I realized I went back and listened to last month's meeting and Suzanne and I did not do our homework, which we were supposed to compile a list of stuff, issues to talk about with the town administrators. So we will do that for the next meeting. And do we know about the scheduling and whether they will be able to come on a Thursday night? Well, we ran into a conflict with the housing problem right. tonight. We will ask them for next for next month and see. So when you say we, okay. are you, you going to do that? I guess so. Yes, I will do that. Okay. But Suzanne and I will work on the issues list. <laughs> okay. Why don't you circulate it internally so we can yes. have an idea? Okay? Yes. We'll try to get that done in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, Robert isn't here on the global component of mayors. Um, as I was showing GB, I'm in the process of reading the meters. I read the meter at the library. And now online, you can read the meter at the, at the um, landfill. And the link to that is on our committee's webpage. That is Wealthly Climate and uh, Wealthly Energy and Climate Action org webpage. Okay, so you can get a link there and that um, will let you see up to the minute where we are, but we've produced so far about 900 megawatt hours, I think. Is that the number? Um, which is good, right? That's what we use in a year. So we may be overproducing this year. Um, I'm not sure, um, Barbara, are you aware of whether or not the town has been getting checks from Amoresco? I do not know. I could ask Rich. Um, I'm having uh, coffee with him on Monday, so I can talk to him about that. Rich who? Oh, Rich Waldo, town administrator. He might oh. know. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, I think it might be the town treasurer would know if somebody's sending mail, mailing in checks. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, that I, I don't know. Um, I assume, well, he might know too. I mean, they're, right. They're nice to have, right? When money arrives in the mail. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. We, um, GP, we went through a lot of effort to allocate the credits on the bills. Is it worthwhile if you do a six month check to see if our estimates were at all reasonable? Uh oh, GB disappeared. GB. I'm here. Okay. Remember we filed those forms? Yep. To say how it should be allocated? Right. Is it worthwhile doing a six month check to see how well the allocation is working? <laughs> okay, I'm confused, Dick, because we were talking about that before, and then I thought you you had said, well, we're getting fixed amounts for you know the three things there for the for the for the lease in lieu of taxes and and whatever, and it was just going to be a, a flat fee in each no, case. No. Two of them are flat fees. Uh -huh. The lease is a flat fee, and the payment in lieu of taxes is a flat fee, but the last $15,000 is an estimate, which is a two cent per kilowatt hour reduction on the bills. But we told them where to allocate the energy. And now we should find out if we made some gross blunder. That is if we are in some, in some way getting credits that exceed our bill. See, um, 
at two cents a kilowatt hour, so we're paying about 11 cents a kilowatt hour. So if we overestimated by a factor of five, their, their credit would still be more than our bill or less than our bill, okay? The only problem is if the credit exceeds the bill, then they keep the money for a while and credit us next month. So there's a lot of leeway. Am I losing? How is this, how is this going to show up? Is this going to show up on the Ever, Eversource bill? Yes. Okay. And as long as the, the credit on the Eversource bill is less than the total amount that's owed on that account, we're golden. I can't imagine it being more, but if we made a blunder, it could be more. And remember, we can correct it every six months. Not on clockwork, we, but we can submit changes no more frequently than every six months. So if we made a blunder, we can fix it. So question for Barbara. Um, Back, back when, before they turned the switch on for the, um, uh, for the, for the solar array, mm -hmm. I, I had received <laughs> a, a large box of paper containing um, a, about two years worth mm -hmm. of Eversource bills for mm -hmm. all of the town accounts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I need quite that much paper <laughs> okay um but uh what i can do mm -hmm. is is provide the list of accounts that we supplied um to amoresco to have mm -hmm. um eversource apply credits to with, with right. the percentages they're supposed to apply right. and it might be helpful if I could get six months worth of Eversource bills for, for just those accounts. Just those? Yeah. Okay. So is what that, would... is that something that, that you you can help us obtain? I hope so. I hope so. I mean I will, you know, I'm I can talk to town staff and see if they can get those to you or get them to me. Um, let me just hang on. I just want to write something down. So, again, what we're checking is that the credits were applied to the bills, right? Hang on. I guess we could, GB, you're checking the credits are applied to the bills. You should get a rough estimate of what the total amount of credits are as of a given date. And then we should look at the production of, as of that date and see if they're in, in order. Okay, so, Roughly. sorry. No, go on. So the, do you have a list of the particular accounts that you were tracking and wanted to see if credits were being applied to? So, I, so that I would be able to give whoever, whoever I talk to town hall and, um, I worked with I worked with uh, Jane Tesson in the past on this. Okay, um, but yes. would they need to be doing any kind of separating out of certain bills, um, you know, for the different departments or or buildings? Would they need to be hmm. doing that separating out of those bills from the rest of the other accounts? Well, it, 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 you know, it, it, all the, all the different entities have yeah. have the, their own separate accounts you know yep. the street lights have their own account right. but the fire right. station and so forth so what we did is we picked the the, the top usage accounts yep. so that we would be sure that they didn't get more credits than um, mm -hmm. you know what they what their usage actually uh, required and mm -hmm. so, as I say, I'll have to look it up, but I, my recollection is about a dozen or so accounts out of the total that and we you have, the, you have the account numbers, right? Yes. And I have the account. Oh, numbers. you do. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I've got a spreadsheet that got it. All that stuff. Okay. Um, again, you... remember, you're only checking that the credits don't exceed the total bill and you have headroom of a factor of five. 
because we're getting two cents a kilowatt hour, and we're paying 11 cents. So if you over underestimate, overestimate by a factor of two, we'd be getting four cents of credit out of 11. So as long as we don't exceed the total bill, we're getting all, we getting all the credits we can use. We're using all the credits we get. Does that make sense to you, GP? <laughs> it's not like we're getting free electricity. We're just getting two cents off and there's no, per kilowatt hour. Okay. And and just so I, I kind of understand the process, historically, it's been this committee that advises the town which accounts to credit with these, um, to, to apply the credits? Is that yeah, the case? The history is this is the first time. Oh. Okay. It only started in January or December. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So this is the first time we're Okay. Checking. Got so it. We recommended and we supplied the, filled out the application or gave our contractor the information to fill out the application. Okay. And GB decided which accounts were most. I, yeah, I did an analysis of, of okay. all of the accounts and, right. and then I just sorted them out by, you know, which ones are the biggest users. And we, we determined that if we went okay. down to, you know, this cutoff point, that, that should suffice for, for our purposes. The one, the one, kind of um, uh, factor that, that you know, could cause some problems is that a lot of these bills were during COVID. Mm -hmm. So they're not reflect, reflected of typical normal time usage in some cases. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, like the police and fire station, I don't think it makes too much difference. You know, they're operating 24 hours a day and that's the right. thing, but you know, places like the library and the school and well, not the school, they're not part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, DPW and so forth, they, 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 you know, they might have been some factors there that changed through the COVID. Um, and when that, that school could, isn't part of it. Does that mean we didn't apply any credits to the elementary school? I thought the elementary school was on the, the Nauset regional situation. But nonetheless, we didn't apply you in the list of. I'll have to. I'll, I'll. I'll look it up. Vic, and check it. I. I, I might be wrong. Okay, because that's a good. It actually that's the best of all worlds. In our quota, we counted them in, in for the total because the nine hundred kilowatts we can, megawatt hours we can. A contract for, the school is included. But because they get a separate budget for power that's different than the rest of the town, let them pay the whole bill and we'll take it off the town accounts. Okay. All right. But if if you've allocated it to the elementary school account, that you know. I, I I my recollection is that it went to the Nauset, you know, school authority or whatever they call. Oh. I don't, you think that they pay their own electric bill? The Norset School District pays the electric bill for Wellesley? Amazing, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to pull up the uh, spreadsheet to see what I've got. Okay, so just give it a sanity check. It's just been a while. We've now had six months yeah. of operation. Let's look at it and see if anything leaps out at you. That is on, okay. So I'm I'm happy to you know to to talk to the account town accountant about um, digging that up. Well, let's let's do this. Let me supply you yeah. with um, the list of accounts that yes. are applicable. Yes. And then it would be a matter of seeing if we can get the most recent six months worth yep. of bills. Unfortunately, the bills come at different cycles during the month. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it just, I guess the thing to do is just take whatever is the most recent and go six months back. And okay. that's the advice. Right. So get a, it's, it's more of a copying job unless I don't, I don't need, by the way, I don't need paper. If they can just copy all that stuff to PDF, that's okay. going to save a lot of effort and money. 
Sure. So, okay. So send me, send me the list. It's just bcarboni at turo-ma.gov. Why Turo? Sorry? That's Why work. Turo? Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong. I'm, I'm sorry. I meant to, I meant to, cause I work for the town of Truro. Just have it. I'm sorry. It should have been Barbara.carboni at wellfleet-ma.gov. Okay, I used your Gmail account to invite you. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to channel things to my Wellfleet address. Thank you for noticing that. Um, it's, it's sometimes I do have to think twice. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'll send it to the. Yeah, uh, the well, yeah, I'm the, I'm the town planner and land use council in Truro. Okay. Um, so the Wabich Shapiro discussion, which was the next thing we talked about reading the meters. Mm -hmm. Let's get on to another thing, the climate action workshops at the library. Um, I've arranged for the library on Wednesday nights, August 31st, September 14th, and September 28th, I guess, every other week. Um, and I have the presentations. I don't know if you've seen them, but the first two, which I did a dry run with one of the, with Am Hayam, which is the congregation. You can see those videos, they're on our website. Um, I think I've circulated the, um, the slides. Um, I sent it off to the Provincetown Independent, the Cape Cod, Cape Codder, Cape Cod Times, not Cape Cod, Cape Cod Times. Um, I also pulled up the old mailing list from out of Cape Energize from 2018 and sent it out, sent out 180 invitations there. That one got a lot of responses and the forum has promised to set to publicize it also. It was in the library newsletter as well. So the room holds about 70 people. We'll see how many people we get but it will be an in-person meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult to do a hybrid meeting without professional help. And Jennifer is really gun shy at the library about doing it. Um, so if we do it, we'd have to worry about the technology ourselves. Um, so I'm still working on whether or not we mm -hmm. do a hybrid or not, but right now it's an in-person meeting. The first meeting is about conservation and home heating, um, electrification, home electrification. And Maggie Downey from the Cape Light Compact will be there supporting us. Um, and what, and David, I forget his last name, but their marketing guy will also come. So the two of them will be there so we will hear from the Cape Light Compact what all the what all the um, things are. Um, I'd like someone on the committee to um, help be the since I'm going to do the presentation. Like like somebody from the committee to be the do the introduction and the host and handle questions and so on. So think about it. If we have any volunteers let me know. Um, I but, plan to attend. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. a little nervous about handling questions, but. <laughs> um, I, you know. I was I, I was planning on attending. I, I, it doesn't particularly bother me to do that. I might not be able to answer all the questions, but I can mm -hmm. certainly, no, you know, right. turn I'll to you, answer. Dick, and say, Dick, you want to <laughs> take that? Right. It's either me or the Cape Light Compact because they have the stuff that's, you know, complicated, like how do the reimbursements work? Um, is this meeting going to be video recorded, though, so they be put out on a, a website you know, somewhere? Video recording at the library consists of somebody putting a, a webcam, uh, putting a camera up and recording it. They have done it in the past. I think we will record it again if it's not too much trouble. 
but um, it'll be an in-person meeting and we will record it. And they have a speed, a sound system there that allows for the roving microphones. Okay, well, GB, if you'd be willing to do the, uh, you know, the hosting and I'll do the presentation and maybe Carol can help with questions, ask, passing the mics around. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I don't know if you've seen the, did I send the flyer out to the committee? Yes. Okay. That was the one that the library prepared. And um, we posted it on Facebook and so on. We'll see what kind of response we get. But so far, the biggest response was from the 2018 Out of Cape Energize program mailing list. Um, good. So we're on our way with that. Um, okay. Is a, Anything on grants and review proposals we need to talk about? Um, no, but I did want to follow up on uh, what we spent quite a lot of time talking about last time, which was the school bus electrification yes. uh, effort at putting pressure on the Cape Cod co Collaborative. So um, the Cape Cod climate change collaborative did send a letter on august 4th to paul hilton um urging them to move in the direction of electrifying the bus fleet um and they're also encouraging their members to recruit select boards to support the initiative we don't have any more information about that um, our select board on August 16th approved a letter encouraging the collaborative to electrify school buses, which passed on an agenda that had a number of things on it. it was the consent the agenda? Meeting. The consent agenda. The consent agenda. So I assume that letter has, has gone to the uh, collaborative. <clears throat> okay. Um... Well, these two new pieces of legislation probably have funding for some of this, right? And, you know, the drumbeat of pressure will probably make them abandon their gas propane buses in favor of electric. We hope. We hope. It is propane, right? Not natural gas. They did do a pro propane effort in 2018. I don't know what percentage of the fleet is propane. Okay. Well, switching over to electricity from propane would be a good idea, but propane is not the worst thing in the world because it's not a greenhouse gas, unlike methane. So while you burn it and it gives off carbon dioxide, that's much smaller than using natural gas where the methane leaks and it itself is a greenhouse gas. So as if all future buses tend to be electric, they'll eventually switch over, I think, completely. Let's just keep the pressure up, right? But we've sent the letter out, you say. Good. Um, so now, um, the only other item, are there other articles that we think we need to take a position on? I can't say as I found any. Does any there was certainly nothing that leapt out at me. Did anyone else look at the warrant and see if there was something? No. I, I did not look at the warrant. I, I looked at it last night. I didn't see any either, Dick. Okay. I couldn't tell anything except what John wanted, and that was marginal, but we voted on that. Um, if you do notice something, well, town meeting will be before our next committee meeting, right? Right, I think the town meeting is about the 11th of September and our next meeting will be in the third week in September. Yeah, it's, it's the 10th. 10th. It's the 10th. 10th, yeah. Mm -hmm. So our meeting will be after that. So this is our last meeting before town meeting. So I will uh, forward the motion that we um, approved of 
Article 5, we support Article 5. And I guess I send that to Danny, right? Danny Silverman? Because it, it's too late to go in the warrant, obviously. So it's something that he has to read at town meeting. The warrant has gone out, right, hasn't it? To the printer. You're on mute. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's gone to the printer. That's what I've heard. Yes. So therefore, the next thing to do is just to let Danny know we, what our vote was mm -hmm. um, so he can read it at town meeting. OK. Um, anything else on future agenda topics for the committee? No, <clears throat> not for me. OK. We haven't heard from Chuck and um, Lily in a few months. Does anyone know if there's anything up with them, either of them? I've seen Chuck around town. Yeah, on so did I. I saw him at the library. This, at least I saw his car at the library this morning. Um, I don't know about Lily. Okay. All right. Um, well, with that, I guess we're at the end of our agenda. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous, 4-0. Thank you very much. We'll see you next. Maybe see, I'll see, see you at town meeting. At August 31st, oh, yeah. a meeting. Oh, yeah, I'm going to try to attend. What, what's, the, what's the date for the next WCAC meeting? The next which? We can us, our, com oh. our committee. <laughs> um, the third Thursday in um, September. Let me call up the calendar and see what that is. But we need to make sure that there's no conflict with the town administrators if we're expecting them to come. Uh, the 15th so is, is the third Thursday. The 15th. Of September. Okay. I mean, the well, third the, Thursday it's is hard to tell. There was nothing on the calendar when I posted the meeting, but I kind of knew there might be. Because it was Lawrence Road that was apparently. Right. And it wasn't on the town calendar at the time I posted it. So let me see about the 15th. Um, So the 15th has no meetings scheduled at this point, but that doesn't mean that somebody won't put something on the agenda that everyone wants to go to. However, it's after town meetings, so there should be fewer surprises. So will you contact the administrators right away and try to secure that date with them? Sure. But even though we secured it the last time, they changed their minds because of Lawrence Road. Right, but they might know. Yes. Okay. Right away, if that was a conflict. Right. Well, it's after town meeting, so we won't be getting any of the pressing meetings that have to happen before town meeting. September fifteenth is the day that the um, the energy committees of the Cape Cod and the islands is meeting four right. through six. Right. We so always do that. Personally, I would rather not attend two, you know, hour and a half meetings back to back. Well, I solved that problem for the last couple of meetings. By not showing up, right. At the first one, yeah. You know, we can lighten our participation. I'm putting down the next meeting is tentatively 9.15. Well, I'm going to I'm going to put it on the town calendar. So it's 9.15. All right. All right. Would you prefer well, to make it 7.30? GB, who is meeting it tentatively on 9.15? Us. Is that what GB meant? Yes. Yes. Okay. Would you rather do it at 7.30 to allow more time between the two meetings? No. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's leave it at that then. See you all on 
August 31st, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.